Clap your hands, all you people, shout to God with a voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome, He is a great King over all the earth. Oh, clap your hands, all you people, shout to God with a voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome, He is a great King over all the earth. Wishing for a mother. Rai is a boy who wished for a mother. Sadly, Rai's mother died when he was just seven years old in Brodowski, Brazil. Rai was left with his father. Rai loved father very much. But sometimes it was difficult for the little boy to live alone with a big, strong man and no gentle, caring mother. Rai had to learn to take care of himself. His father was old and busy and did not have time to teach him many things. Rai missed the love and care of his mother. Then Rai got a new mother. Father found a new wife and got married. But, sadly, just a year later, Rai's new mother also died. Rai was a sad boy. It seemed like he would never have a mother again. Then Rai became a pathfinder. Someone told him about the Pathfinder Club at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he decided to become a member. Rai enjoyed participating in Pathfinder activities with the other children. He loved listening to stories about Jesus. He found new friends whom he could count on, and he gave his heart to Jesus. But Rai's heart still ached. He longed for a mother. As Rai spent time with the Pathfinders, he formed a special friendship with the director of the Pathfinder Club, a big, strong man named Mr. Alexander. Rai especially liked Mr. Alexander's wife, Mrs. Claudian. He decided that she would be his new mother. Mrs. Claudian felt a mother's love for Rai, and she accepted him as her son. Mr. Alexander and Mrs. Claudian already had two young children, Joao Pedro and Ana Clara, 
they accepted Rai as their new brother. Little by little, the new family lovingly welcomed Rai into their home. He became the eldest son, with his own room, closet, and clothes. He even got braces for his crooked teeth, which was his dream. Today, Rai still lives with father and loves him very much. His new family taught him the importance of keeping the fifth commandment, which says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20.12 Therefore, Rai takes turns living with father and with his new family. Father, who is quite old now, is happy that Rai has a new family. He knows that God gave the new family to Rai so Rai could receive the care that he couldn't provide. Today, Rai loves God with all his heart. Through the Pathfinders, God fulfilled the wish. He is a boy with a new mother, and much more. He has a new family. Part of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help open a new church in Rai's hometown of Bradowski. A new church in another part of the city will provide an opportunity to open another Pathfinder Club where even more children can learn about Jesus. Thank you for planning a generous offering on September 24. Many people believe that there are myths in the Bible. Myths are stories or events which are not really true. So today's question, did God really part the Red Sea or is it a myth? Well, let us see if we can discover the truth about this. The people of Israel were slaves in Egypt. They were treated really badly. They cried out to God. They begged him to save them. And God answered. He sent someone. Do you know who he sent? God sent Moses. He sent him to the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh that God said to free the people of Israel. But Pharaoh refused to let them go. So, God sent plagues, ten of them. There was water that turned to blood, there were frogs, there was darkness, locusts, boils, hailstones, ten plagues altogether. The final one was the death of the firstborn in each family. And when this happened, when Pharaoh's son died, he then allowed the Israelites to leave Egypt. The Israelites were excited. They were so happy to be free. God had promised to give them a wonderful life in a place called Canaan. And now they were on their journey to the land of Canaan. How excited they must have been. It might be a long journey, but at least they were free from slavery in Egypt. Now they can worship their God as they wanted to, and they were on their way to a wonderful place. But not long after they left, 
the Pharaoh changed his mind and he decided that these people can't be allowed to be free. He and his army hurried after the Israelites to make them slaves again. Someone came running to tell Moses that Pharaoh and his army were coming. They were after them and the Israelites became so afraid. There was no way of escape. The Red Sea was in front of them and the Egyptian army was behind them. No place to turn. But they did not think about the fact that God was with them. The people cried out to Moses, what are we going to do? And Moses turned to God. Well, let's go to the Bible. Let's see what happened. And we will pick up this story in Exodus chapter 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Command the people of Israel to start moving. Raise your walking stick and hold it over the sea. The sea will split and then the people can cross the sea on dry land. Moses held his hand over the sea. All that night, the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind. And so he made the sea become dry ground. The water was split and the Israelites went through the sea on dry land. A wall of water was on both sides. Could you imagine that God opened the sea so that the water stood up like walls on either side? Then all the king's horses and chariots and drivers followed them into the sea. Hmm, let's see what happened. Then the Lord told Moses, hold your hand over the sea. Then the water will come back over the Egyptians and their chariots and their chariot drivers. Now, let me just stop here for a moment before we continue reading to say, Israelites had traveled between the walls of water and dry ground and they had gotten over to the other side of the Red Sea. And it is at this point, God said to Moses, Hold your hand over the sea. Then the water will come back over the Egyptians, their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses raised his hand over the sea. And at dawn, the water became deep again. The Egyptians were trying to run from it, but the Lord swept them away into the sea. The water became deep again. It covered the chariots and the chariots drivers. So all the king's army that had followed the Israelites into the sea was covered. Not one of them survived. God had saved his people. And of course, they rejoiced. They were so happy. They were so excited that God had worked this awesome miracle. And he had saved them from the Egyptians who were trying to take them back to the awful experience of slavery that they had experienced. Now, I really like this story. Let me tell you why this story is one of my favorites. Because it is one of many children's favorite stories. Because it was a great miracle by God to deliver Israel out of Egypt. And I love a celebration. So I like this story because there was a great celebration by the Israelites when it was all over. But we began by asking a question, a question that many persons have asked. Is this story of the parting of the Red Sea as recorded in the Bible a myth? Is it real? Did it really happen? Did God really do this? Or is it just a story that is not true? Well, some Christians ask that same question, but God's word said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching and for showing people what is wrong in their lives. It is useful for correcting faults and teaching us how to live right. Using the scriptures, the person who serves God will be ready and will have everything he needs to do every good work. Now, I want us to focus on the section that is underlined. All scripture is inspired by God. So whatever is written in the Bible, God is the one who inspired the writing of those words. 
And John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Again, we are focusing on the words that are underlined. Your word is truth. So God is the one who inspired, directed the writing of the Bible and his word is truth. So whatever the Bible says about the Red Sea experience, it is true. But you know, sometimes people want something extra because they don't trust what God says. Well, science also confirms that this actually happened. There is an exciting piece of evidence that has been discovered which confirms what the Bible says. Do you know what it is? Can you imagine what it is? Let's see what science has discovered that confirms that God parted the Red Sea, just as the Bible says. Hmm. Remains of chariot wheels have been found on the floor of the Red Sea. So someone, an archaeologist named Ron Wyatt, discovered the remains of chariot wheels covered in coral at the bottom of the sea. Some of the wheels were single wheels which had come to rest in the sea, while others were part of a set of two still attached to their axes. Wow, what does this say? Is this important? Of course it is, because these wheels were discovered to be part of chariots which were kept specially for the Egyptian army. So what this is saying is that science, an archaeologist, has discovered that the same type of chariots, the same types of wheels that were used by the Egyptian army back in Bible times are the same types of wheels that have been found at the bottom of the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea. It sounds to me that science is saying that God did part the Red Sea and that the Egyptian army did try to follow God's people through the Red Sea. But as the Bible tells us, they will discover there is something else that confirms this as well. Human bones and bones from horses were also found in the Red Sea. Wow, isn't that awesome? So all these things were confirmed as true by the Stockholm University. Isn't it awesome that what God's word says that people don't want to believe now science is telling us, is telling everyone, hey, what the Bible says is true because we have found the evidence at the bottom of the Red Sea. Wow. God's word, the Bible can be trusted. What it says is true. And boys and girls, I trust what God's word says. And time after time, we are discovering that what God's word has already said, scientists are now coming to say, hey, you know, that's true after all. But we don't need the scientists to confirm or to tell us that what God's word say is true. We know that God's word is true. The story of the parting of the Red Sea. It's not a myth. It's not something that people have created. It's not a made-up story. It is true. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that your word is true. We thank you that we can trust your word. We thank you even that science is helping those who doubt to believe and accept your word. Continue to bless us, Lord, as we study your word. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So see you soon as we continue to answer the question, are there myths in the Bible? God bless you. The road may not be easy, but yes, Lord, I will go. Telling others all around me that Jesus loves them so. Sometimes there may be struggles, but through his sacrifice we can win. This grace in Jesus Christ. Every day we can have victories, the temptation stand before us. If we keep our eyes on Jesus all the way. And
temptations stand before us. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can all have victory in Him. I can do all things to Jesus, it's the promise that I claim. I can do all things to Jesus, as I call upon His name. I can overcome my troubles. Again, again, and again, I can do all things in Jesus' name. Every day we can have victories, the temptations stand before us. If we keep our eyes on Jesus all the way. Every day we can have victories, the temptations stand before us. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can all have victory in Him. We can all have victory in Him. Wishing for a Mother Rai is a boy who wished for a mother. Sadly, Raya's mother died when he was just seven years old in Berdowski, Brazil. Rai was left with his father. Rai loved father very much. But sometimes it was difficult for the little boy to live alone with a big, strong man and no gentle, caring mother. Rai had to learn to take care of himself. His father was old and busy and did not have time to teach him many things. Rai missed the love and care of his mother. Then Rai got a new mother. Father found a new wife and got married. But, sadly, just a year later, Rai's new mother also died. Rai was a sad boy. It seemed like he would never have a mother again. Then Rai became a Pathfinder. Someone told him about the Pathfinder Club at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he decided to become a member. Rai enjoyed participating in Pathfinder activities with the other children. He loved listening to stories about Jesus. He found new friends whom he could count on, and he gave his heart to Jesus. But Raya's heart still ached. He longed for a mother. As Rai spent time with the Pathfinders, he formed a special friendship with the director of the Pathfinder Club, a big, strong man named Mr. Alexander. Rai especially liked Mr. Alexander's wife, Mrs. Claudian. He decided that she would be his new mother. Mrs. Claudian felt a mother's love for Rye, and she accepted him as her son. Mr. Alexander and Mrs. Claudian already had two young children, Joel Pedro and Ana Clara, they accepted Rye as their new brother. Little by little, the new family lovingly welcomed Rye into their home. He became the eldest son, with his own room, closet, and clothes. He even got braces for his crooked teeth which was his dream. Today, Rai still lives with father and loves him very much. His new family taught him the importance of keeping the fifth commandment, which says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20.12 Therefore, Rai takes turns living with father and with his new family. Father, who is quite old now, is happy that Rai has a new family. He knows that God gave the new family to Rai so Rai could receive the care that he couldn't provide. Today, Rai loves God with all his heart. Through the Pathfinders, God fulfilled the wish. He is a boy with a new mother and much more. He has a new family. Part of the 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help open a new church in Rai's hometown of Bradowski. A new church in another part of the city will provide an opportunity to open another Pathfinder Club where even more children can learn about Jesus. Thank you for planning a generous offering on September 24. Hi guys! Do you know the fruit that I am holding in my hand? You guessed it right, it's mango! But do you know the tree that this fruit comes from? Join me and figure out more lessons from mango trees. Number one, big goals take time. A mango tree grows from a small plant and it takes a long time to grow to the stage where it can bear fruits. 
Once a mango tree has started to bear, the fruit is delicious and so nutritious. In the same way, some goals may take time to become reality, but don't give up. Big goals take time. Number 2. Everything has a season. It is mango season now, but in a few months there will be no more mango. So right now, I enjoy the mangoes around me, because soon there will be no more. Sometimes things get difficult, and it's very hard to believe that it's just for a time. But remember, everything has a season and tough times never last. Number 3. Greed is bad, but giving is good. Have you ever seen how much mango a tree bears? It gives and gives until the season is over. Imagine keeping all these mangoes for yourself. Do you give or do you keep all you have to yourself? Giving is good. Mango trees are such amazing character teachers. 